Alright, my name is Chris Morin. I'm going to do my best to show you how to install an application called GNS3, or Graphic ne Network Simulator 3, um, which is a hypervisor engine which will enable you to run Cisco router um, iOS software um, emulated on your computer. So it will uh, remove the need for you to uh, build a routing lab. And this is helpful for future videos that will encompass um, well, routing. So um, let's go ahead and open up our web browsers and I have a link to this particular location in uh, the info bar. Um, GNS3 is available on Windows, Mac, and uh, you can install it on Linux as well. You got tar files and stuff like that. But we're just going to focus on the Windows bit. So we're going to go ahead and go to the link and I'm not going to wait so just click download, save file and let it download. It's not a terribly big file and it's also not a terribly complex program. Um, it has its caveats. Uh, occasionally it'll crash or you have an issue, but the uh, the amount of you know money and effort saved and the convenience of being able to do all of this on your computer is well worth um, actually figuring it out, which is why I'm going to be doing most of my labs on it and uh, encouraging you all to do it. Now it's just a standard installation, just click next a bunch of times. That's telling me I've already installed something, which is fine. We'll just reinstall it. Not a big deal. Goes through, installs relatively quickly. And look, then we're done. So uh, it puts an icon on your desktop called GNS3. Um, so that's basically downloading and installing GNS3. So you now have it, congratulations. So now that that's done, we can uh, double click on it and it tells you, hey, you need to configure me. Which is true. There's a few things you need to do before GNS3 will actually become functional. One of the first and important ones is testing and seeing if Dynaps is correctly configured and your terminal settings. So while we're here, let's go over to terminal settings and tell it that uh, we're going to be using PuTTY. go ahead and apply and then we can go over to Dynaps and we need to make sure that it knows where this file is properly located. Now in Windows sometimes it, I've seen it get confused where if you have a 64-bit operating system it doesn't know to look in the x86 program files folder. So I will usually just confirm and uh, as you can see it is actually already searching there but for the sake of le learning remember we're looking for this file so that's that one. Hit open Make sure we see the x86, hit apply, and then test it again. It should see successfully started. The rest of this defaults are usually fine. Um, you can go through your general settings and change where you want your projects to be saved and where you have your iOS images located by default. I'm not going to worry about it because this is temporary for you guys, but if you plan on using this repeatedly, you might want to dedicate it a directory to your projects and dedicated a directory for your Cisco iOS. Let's apply it OK. And now we get to add another one of our iOS images. So hit the number two button and as you can see we get this screen. Um, first thing we need to do is find the iOS file. And I'll have this also linked in the uh, um, info bar. I keep forgetting what to call that thing. Anyway, um, we're going to be using a 2600 file and uh, we're going to be using this one. Now you also get to configure what kind of platform it is. Obviously it's a 2600 and what kind of model it is. This should not really matter but I'll tell you with uh, this image file that we're using um, this default of 2621 was fine. We'll configure idle PC in a moment and we just change the default RAM to 128 and that should be sufficient. Hit save. It appears there. It's the default image. And hit close. OK. Congratulations. We've now configured GNS3. So the next thing we want to do is actually get a router running. So let's plop the 2600 down here. It'll take it a few moments to realize what it's doing. We'll plop down the second one. And uh, we're going to give them interfaces so they can connect to each other. Now to do that, you right click on them. Configure. Router 1. Slots. It's a WIC. So we do a WIC 1T for a serial interface. And we're going to do the same thing 
for the second one. And this is a very basic tutorial. Um, up here is your connections button. Add a link. Click it. Serial. Connect them to each other. On click it. And you can mouse over it and it will tell you the connection type. It is... S00 to S00. Magical. Um, so once we have that completed, we can hit this giant play button here and we can start both of the routers. Now, before we do that, and since we haven't used these routers before, they do not have an idle PC value configured. And what this means, basically, is let me go ahead and start my task manager. Um, and we're looking at a CPU usage, and you can also see it there. Is um, when I turn on this one, we're going to watch it skyrocket. Now it's on, and now I'm at 80-90%. Now, it'll take it about 30 seconds to complete its boot process, 30 seconds to a minute, and you'll see it lower a little bit, but not significantly. The only time it'll lower significantly is when you right-click on it and do idle PC. And let me warn you now, um, if this video is any longer than like six, seven minutes long, it's because this took forever. Because you only have to do this once, but it's kind of a hit or miss type thing. So you, you click idle PC and it calculates a, a value for you. Um, and uh, what you're looking for when it gives you the list is the value that has an asterisk next to it, or essentially the, the value with the highest value. Um, or yeah, the hex value with the highest value. So click this little arrow, and I actually don't see anything with an asterisk next to it. So I'm just going to pick this one that's a 76. I actually don't know if that's a good indicator or not, but that's what I've been following. Hit OK, and we're going to see if this drops at all. Does it drop? Does it drop? Not really. So unfortunately, we are going to try again. Now this is essential if you want your um, hypervisors to be running smoothly. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, unless it's maxed at 100% constantly, your CPU, you're not really going to have any problems. But when running a lot of them, you really should um, have it. See, so now I have two with asterisks. I'm going to pick the one with the higher value. Hit OK. And watch our CPU. And it lowered a little bit. Not really. One more try. Third time's a charm, right? Yes, this is annoying. And yes, if there is one reason that would actually make me go on eBay right now and buy a bunch of routers, it would be because of this tedious bit. But to be perfectly honest with you, um, it's worth it. There you go. See how it instantly dropped to below 50? That's because when I'm not using that router now, it's not going to call upon its CPU. Let's do the same thing for the second one. It's going to skyrocket for a little while. Let's configure its idle PC. Now also note, one, you only have to do this once. Only once. So, I mean, if it takes me seven minutes to explain and use this software, uh, then you just saved yourself potentially hundreds of dollars. Now, see, when I applied that idle PC value, my CPU hit 100%. That's because that idle PC value sucked. So let's try again. Here's one with an asterisk. Hit OK. Drop down back to the 50s. Alright, so pretty simple. Now, in order to actually get to these console windows, you can right click on them, hit console. Suddenly your putty window will open if you have putty installed, and um, we actually, it should be at a prompt, yeah. Um, so, hello router one, and uh, you can do the same thing over here, console in, I'll bring it down, hello router two. So that's pretty slick. Um, now. They're connected to each other, so just a couple of, of really simple Cisco commands as a show IP interface brief. Um, you can see that the serial interface over here is down, 
and uh, we can do the same thing over here. Now that's because we need to configure them. Um, so, off the top of my head, um, you can go to a configure terminal, interface serial zero zero, IP address one nine two one six eight one one two five two five two five dot zero. Uh, clock rate. We'll just do ninety six hundred. Um, and then we'll do no shut. Go down here. Comp T and that's zero zero. Um, IP address one nine two one six eight dot one dot two two five two five two five dot zero. By the way, that I wouldn't suggest that for a point to point link. I'm just configuring this really fast. Clock rate. If I could spell clock right. Nine six hundred. Oh, actually, that's a mistake. You only need to specify the clock rate on one end of it, so that's not necessary for this end. And and, and technically, when you're um, connecting up the physical cables, um, it's the female end of that cable that is specifying the clock rate. If this is like a, a normal serial connection, but we'll worry about that later. And then we can you no know, shut the uh, port, and uh, we should get up notifications that it's going up, and if we rerun that command I ran earlier, show IP interface brief, you now see that's up and up. Go down here again, show IP interface brief, up and up. If we do a show IP route, you see that uh, that subnet is directly connected via S00. So now this one, I can ping 192. 1.1. Look, very complicated, isn't it? You can ping 192.168.1.2. Now I know that wasn't anything special. Um, that's just a, a showing of basic functionality. And unlike Packet Tracer, if you've ever been in there where you hit the question mark button and you only get like 16 commands, watch what happens. I hit the question mark button. Look at all these things I can do. Look at that. The versatility of this is very much worth the effort it takes to set up. And as you can tell, it only took me about five, ten minutes to set it up, and I'm done. Um, and you know, multiply this with different types of router iOSs, and you can have a configuration with eight, ten routers, con you know, using advanced routing protocols to communicate with each other. It's just a fantastic um, solution to actually being able to. Uh, Make these complex labs uh, sporadically without having to break out real equipment, without having to spend thousands of dollars. Um, uh, something to note is that you can't emulate switching in it, um, but you can buy real switches and you can interface this with the real hardware, which is something I'll show you how to do another time. But uh, for now, that is all I really wanted to show you. and. Um, I hope uh, it was informative for you, and I hope I can continue to provide more things for you in the future. You guys have a good one.